them. I mean, if you took a subtitle or I maybe even the title of Anne's book on order in the house, it's about saturating your home with the love of Jesus, saturating your home with the love of God. And all she's doing is showing in so many different ways how to just flow in the love of God, how to provide the love. And it, it's, not, it's not human love, it's divine love. And there's principles there. And, and it's such a blessing. Uh, I, I, I just pray that everyone would take that book to heart and read it. And because it, it's not, even if you don't have children yet, I mean, it's valuable in terms of that foundation that has to exist between mom and dad for the child to come into the, into the home and to be really whole. You're not going to be really whole unless you have what God has created us for, created for, created for us to have. And He's created for us to have this unlimited relationship with Him. Dad's relationship has got to be right with the Father. Mom's relationship has got to be right with the Father. If, mom's, if Dad's relationship is right with the Father, there's going to be the authority and the rulership and the governorship and the leadership, especially spiritual that needs to be in the house. The Lord didn't just create the man or the man's role isn't just to provide for the material uh, natural needs. It, primarily above that, he is to provide for the spiritual needs. And that's really what I'm going to talk about tonight. That role of rulership, governorship, and priesthood. And it's not, you're going to understand it. People have got a bent idea. They, they got a weird idea about this because they try to understand the the things of God in the context of a human framework. You cannot understand the things of God in the context of a human framework. These are the things of the Spirit that belong to the realms of heaven. You don't take anything out of the dimension of love, joy, and peace and have anything that belongs to what God's ordained to be in the house. You know, people hear about, oh, the, you know, the woman's got to submit and reverence her husband, thinks that's some kind of oppressive thing. You think that God rules with oppression? He hates oppression. Huh? He hates control. He, didn't, he doesn't want any of that. He doesn't want anybody loving him, serving him because they have to. He, he doesn't want that. He wants, real, he wants truth. He wants real relationship. He's not a dictator. He says, here it is. Here it is. I'm giving these opportunities to you. Now, if you're willing to take them, I'll mentor you. I'll help you. I'll, I'll I'll, I'll be there with all the mercy and all the forgiveness that you need, huh? And all the resources that you need. And then a woman comes along and says, well, I'm smarter than my husband. It has nothing to do about it. You probably are smarter than him. It has nothing to do with it whatsoever. You can probably make better grades on any test, probably figure out any mechanics better than him. Who knows? You may be, you may be a giant mentally over him, you know? It has nothing to do with that. God has given an anointing, you see, upon the man. He didn't put it on the woman. He said to Adam, Adam, this is what you're going to do. Now you tell the woman. The father didn't even talk to, the, to Eve. He gave the instruction to man. Man would give it to the instruction to his wife. And now that's really what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. I'm going to help you understand. And so therefore, if the wife isn't in submission to her husband, if, her, if the wife isn't going to allow the man to be the leader, she ain't going to receive anything from heaven. She's not receiving anything from the Lord. And yet I will emphasize over and again, men dwell with your wives according to knowledge, lest your prayers be hindered. And there is absolutely no question about uh, the, the, the need for men to understand how to dwell with their wives according to knowledge. Now, once again, that harkens back to the first series on order in the house. And I don't intend to repeat any of that because I've got additional information that I need to roll out to you, okay? That you need to grab a hold of and say, this is the word of God. And if you do this, it's going to work. I'm going to tell you right now, if a man has got a right relationship with the Lord Jesus and the woman has the right relationship with the Lord Jesus and with her husband, that home is going to raise a godly seed. That home is going to raise children that are not dysfunctional. They are whole. They know how to flow in the Holy Ghost. They know how to enter in to all the blessings of God. I've watched this so many people. They hindered. They hindered. They got a ceiling. They hindered financially. They hindered spiritually. It's a ceiling. They can't get past it. It's like, it's like that there is, it's like a, a relic, it's like a delegated, you can go only so far and that's it. You stop here. And it's because of things they bought into, lifestyles that they live, thought patterns that they, uh, that they have, 
ideas, principles that they really believe are right. I, I, I challenge you. I encourage you. Erase all of that. Get rid of it. Let God rewrite the plan for you, okay? Because if you do, then you're going to find out that there is a riches that comes right out from heaven that you can't earn with your hand. I mean, I'm talking about riches, wealth. I'm not talking about just spiritual wealth. I'm talking about, I'm talking about natural wealth. God made Abraham a very wealthy man, okay? And it had nothing to do with his smarts, his cunning, and his work ethic. It had to do with his walk with God. Then nothing changed. People so running after trying to get ahead and all they're doing is, you know, they, they find only the ceiling of whatever um, occupation or vocation they were able to enter into. And that's it. And they never stepped into the miracle provision of God. They live only within the confines of the provision which the caste system, which is alive and well in America, believe it or not, imposes upon them. And that's the career you chose, the vocation you, you were given permission to go into based upon your performance. Father has another realm for us. And I, we just want you to get into this realm. We just want you to be blessed. I mean, you're going to sacrifice one thing or the other. You might as well go ahead and sacrifice you so you can have the blessings of God rather than sacrifice God so you can have the blessings of you. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And we say, repeat that one more time. Because good thing of it is, is it's on YouTube, we're going to be, and it's here, you know, so that you can listen to that a couple of times. You're going to sacrifice something. I'd say sacrifice what you would go with. Amen. To have what God has for you. Amen. Praise God. I was telling somebody just recently, I said, look, the world's crucified to me. I sacrifice temporal pleasures that I might have heavenly pleasures. I'd rather sacrifice temporal pleasures and have heavenly pleasures than sacrifice heavenly pleasures to have temporal pleasures. I don't care how good they look. Every temporal pleasure has for it corruption and death and destruction. And it has for it, you know, at, at best choking you to, to death to where you can't enjoy the good things of God. Come on, man. Forget about that. Let the world be crucified to you. Just crucify, sacrifice that thing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And go ahead and say, I'm going to do it God's way. Maybe I don't understand it. There are many things I've done and obeyed God in. I didn't understand them. I just, I didn't understand it. If I tried to logically think through it, I could have rationalized so many different things. I didn't understand it. I just did it because God said to do it. Huh? And he, and, and he knows best. He is the designer of life. He is the designer. <laughs> he is the one who fashioned it. He knows how it works. We do not know. We think we know because we've been bathed, baptized into the selfish interest of human competition. Huh? And, 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 and purpose. And the Lord has just promoted us to come now over into a realm where we can hear from heaven and understand what it is that he's doing, what it is he thinks. And if we'll just go ahead and cooperate with that, my goodness, what a blessing. So I'm open up tonight just simply with this title, with this, with, this, with this banner scripture of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. And because this, is a, this, this, this scripture encapsulates a lot of things because the love of Christ encapsulates a lot of things. The love of Christ isn't just, you can't just look at the love of Christ in just one dimension. He died for us on the cross of Calvary. That certainly does indeed uh, exemplify above all other things in, in what God has done for us, the love that God has for us. He spared not his own son, okay? But it has many dimensions to it. And I'm going to just hit briefly on two of the dimensions in general. And then I'll get, maybe we'll get into a, a more uh, uh, as, as subheadings under them. But I'm going to talk to you about rulership. <laughs> Uh, which sounds real scary, you know, rulers. Yeah, what's that mean? <laughs> and talk about priesthood. And I'm going to talk about it in the context of the Bible, not in the context of the frameworks of, uh, of, of a demonic realm, in a, a human realm. Give me a break. We're over here in the love of Jesus, okay? So you have to just put what you think rulership means away and understand rulership in the context of how God is a ruler, okay? He hates oppression. He hates injustice. He rules in equity and truth and mercy and love and kindness and covenant love. Huh? Come on, I think I want you to get over here in the right frame of mind so you can understand what I'm saying. If you get in the wrong thing, frame of mind, you won't understand what I'm saying. I watched this as pastor, right? and it's it, over the years. And, you know, God's got something to deliver. And immediately, 
And, and if people will get in the wrong frame of mind, they'll start feeling condemned or they feel like a failure, they feel like they're not performing and they'll feel this or they'll feel that. And they can't hear the rest of the thing that was being said. They can't hear the answer because they're stuck. You're not in the right frame of mind. You're not in the right frame of mind of his mercy, of his grace, of how he's dedicated and devoted to your success, how he's here right now to take you from where you're at to the place that he's purposed for you to come to and live in. Okay, so let's get in the right frame of mind. And by the help of the grace of the Lord Jesus, stay there. Okay, let's not move from that in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Huh? That right frame of mind is the mind of Christ. It's the mind of the Spirit. It's that disposition of what heaven's all about, what God the Holy Ghost is all about, what Jesus is all about. How many of you want God to rule over you? That's all I'm talking about here. Because I'm telling you right now, if the man's being ruled by God, that's a good rulership. He's going to imitate God. He's going to do exactly what God's doing. And then, and then in your house, you're going to have the rulership of God because the proper connection was made. But if you defy the rulership of God, you're not going to have anything but arguing, strife. And, and your kids going to want to get out of the house because they're tired of hearing mom and dad fight with one another and bickering. And, and, and where's the anointing at anyways? Nobody, I mean, it's a wonderful thing. I think it's a wonderful thing how mom and dad are able to hook up in the anointing in front of their children. And they both begin to prophesy, speak the word. Dad says this and mom chimes in with the word of prophecy. It's also word of knowledge and direction goes right along with it. And it's all the Holy Ghost talking. It's just in there arguing about something you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even, you don't even know what you're talking about. You're just guessing and you're arguing about your guesses because you think your guess is superior to the other person's guess. Are you with me? What a bunch of insanity. Let's get out of that. Let's get over here. Let's start speaking the word of God, living the word of God. Quit being so high-minded. I'm not talking about what a man knows superior to a woman. It has nothing to do with it. I'm talking about a divine anointing. God, the Holy Ghost, didn't make me smarter than you. He gave me an anointing to minister to you. That's it. That's the only difference here. I received by his will because he alone decides. He, he, he not based upon anything else, he chooses and he divides individually according to his will, okay? And out of that, it's good, it's beautiful. So it has nothing to do with human talents. It has nothing to do with human ability. It's a divine ability. And we're not talking about the modern day concept of a husband and wife, man and woman, um, you know, equality and whatever else. We're talking about divine order, the anointing that God has placed upon a man and how he put it all together so that a divine hookup could take place between the man and himself so that all of his blessings would flow down through to the man so that he might minister to his whole family, not after his own intellect, not after his own ability, not after his own worth, not after what his own hand can attain to, but actually limit uh, an unlimited realm of divine glory because father because the, both the husband and the wife are willing to participate is able to download all of his spiritual blessings everything that he himself has so it's like you have God ruling in your house that is a blessing man that is heaven on earth and you know people hear people say all the time want to have Marriage made in heaven. Well, then you're going to have to keep it in heaven. If the man and the woman are devoted to following Father's divine order and will, everybody's going to get happy about this. They're going to rejoice. They're not going to be like, oh, man, I just, I've got to live this sacrificial life. Of, I mean, I'm, I've got to lay down my life more for my husband than he's got to lay down his life for me because i got to obey him. That ain't it. That's the wrong frame of thinking. That's, not, that's like saying you've got, to, you've got to obey God for the rest of your life. What, that is, what a sacrifice. No, 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 no. You're willing to obey God because you know how loving he is. You're not willing to obey God because you know how good he is. There is a long track record of God's performance, okay? You don't have to look at the track record of your husband's performance because it's not about that. It's about you, woman, empowering the man to now be able to be taught of God and receive all that the Father has so that you can enjoy the blessing of it too. Because it ain't going to come any other way. Huh? Just isn't. Not according to anything that's revealed in the Scripture. You're just going to have to assume that or make it up as you go. Because it, it just does. Are you listening to me? Huh? 
dad, woman, wife, daughter, that blessing came down to you from above in the home that God created through your, for the, your father. Huh? Then it was handed off to the husband. Huh? And the husband's going to have to learn how to rule. And the husband's going to rule. And the husband's going to have to learn how to be the priest. And I'm going to give you a real basic introduction to that tonight. Amen? You ready? So, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, dear people, if you would just take that concept and now begin to understand how that Jesus right now rules over the church, how that Jesus right now is priest over the church, all the long suffering, all the mercy, all the forgiveness, all the grace, all the dedication to leading, to establishing, to providing, to perfecting. Now you're going to be able to understand really how a husband is supposed to be function, men functioning. Men, you can understand how you're supposed to be functioning. Jesus, as God, ever lives to pray, to make intercession for us, his household. Well, think about that. He didn't get around and start arguing with us. Listen, you know, Huh? You got to listen. He went to pray for us. He got down on his knees, as it were, and began to cry out to God for the change. He didn't try with a, some force, well, listen to me, you're out, bam, bam, you know, you got to listen to me. That's nonsense. That's in a demonic realm. That's oppression. That's control. That's manipulation. He never manipulated anybody, ever. So I want you to get love context right here, okay? And now, I want to start laying out some examples for you. Genesis 18, 19 is a powerful message to you and me. And, and to how God feels about things. Now, now, he says, For I know her, that she will command her children and her household after her, that she shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Sarah that which he has spoken unto her. Okay? Anybody agree with that? Okay, so now that we understand he did not speak to the woman, hallelujah, <laughs> that he is talking to the covenant man, just like he caught, talked to the covenant Adam, just like he brought, he healed, he's placed upon man's shoulders the responsibility for his seed. Dear woman, dear wife, come. This is a huge responsibility. Come throw in on this thing. We need some help over here. Are you listening to me? We got to have order in the house. We got a big task, a big job ahead of us. I mean, come on. God's placed it on our shoulders. What could be uh, uh, for our children, our grandchildren, and descendants all the way through our seed and our seed seed. Blessed because of the way we walk with God. Need some help. And so God made a help. That's right. He made a partner. He made someone stand alongside of the man to ultimately fulfill his role and his divine destiny and mandate that was placed upon him. Okay? Praise God. So we, let me read it right now. He says, for I know him. Now here, and let me give you the context. The Lord's getting ready to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, you know, he's he just passing by seeing his friend Abraham on his way. And he says, shall I hide from Abraham that which I am about to do, seeing that uh, what I'm going to do through him, I'm going to make him a mighty nation. I'm going to bless the nations of the earth through him. And here's why. For I know him. You with me? I'm, I'm going to do all that I'm going to do for Abraham. I'm not going to hide anything that I'm planning on doing for Abraham. And here's why. I'm going to bless him above all others. And here's why. I'm going to bless the nations through him. And here's why. Because he will command his house. Now men, you're going to have to understand that if you try and to demand out of the realms of human ability, out of some kind of sibling rivalry, forget about it. You're going to get nothing but an argument. But if you reach into heaven 
and you get an anointing from heaven and you get a mantle that has been made available to you by God to do the things that Father created the man to do and to be, I'll tell you right now, it's going to be accepted in a much different way. Hallelujah. Come on now. Men, look, you know, I, I had somebody in my house the other day. I said, he said, you know, what am I doing wrong? I said, you know what? Women need security. They don't need to hear all your senses of fear that, you, that everything's going to basically, uh, you know, burn up and be gone tomorrow. They, they can't see you basically being weak and, 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 and worried that it ain't going to work out. You know, come on. God is giving you that position of faith and confidence and boldness. Say, we fine here. Don't worry about anything. Just stand right behind me. I'm going to take good care of you. Here we go. Come on. You know, so it, it, there is a lot of dimensions to this leadership that has to be there. There has to be faith. There has to be boldness. There has to be confidence. There has to be assurance. There has to be those things, those qualities that can only come out of a divine anointing that has been supplied to us by the Holy Ghost. Not self-confidence, not self-assurance, not self-boldness. I'm talking about a mantle from heaven that it comes right out of the realm of a faith relationship with Jesus Christ, knowing how to live in, walk in, move in the Holy Ghost. Huh? And I'm going to tell you, we know good and well there's going to be a lot of tenderness. There's going to be a lot of covenant love. There's going to be a lot of gentleness. There's going to be a lot of affection because those are fruits of the Spirit. That's the love of God. There's going to be tenderness and gentleness and caring. There's going to be the one, hey, look, come cast all your cares on me. I'll take care of you. Come on. That's the love of Jesus. Are you with me? you got to bring it into the full framework of things as they relate to who Jesus is to us, who God is to us, rather than trying to stick this into some human, you know, square hole, with, so to speak. And um, it just don't fit. It just won't work. And then you get all these crazy ideas. And then you do have oppression. And then you do have uh, women being controlled and being, women being run over top of and, and not regarded and not given the love. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I believe with all of my heart a man needs to be loving his wife on a continual basis in every kind of way. In every, I mean, I'm talking about the many kisses of the mouth. I'm talking about the hugs and the affection. That man, the man is supposed to be supplying that like a river. Man, my, come on. A continual bathing, baptizing your wife in it. That's what, that's what we're talking about, the love of Jesus. Give me a break. Huh? <laughs> and, and the woman needs to be responsive. And, and if she's not responsive, you get yourself a problem because Paul said, you don't, you, you, he says it like this. He really puts it on an equal basis. He says, the man ha is not the owner of his own body, but it belongs to the wife. Huh? And the wife's body to the man. And so that you can't even go and fast unless you agree to abstain from that wonderful flow of affection. Come on, give me a break, people. Get the kisses out. Get the people, get those spirits of the game. And go, come on. That ain't spiritual. That's weird. That ain't what God made. That's not what he made. He made this beautiful woman, brought him, brought him to Adam and said, here you go, buddy. And he's like, woo, I'm sorry, sir, nothing. <laughs> you know, come on. Every dimension of this is so important. Oh, well, we tired. No, we, we're in on the job. You got all everything I have. And I got a headache. And all. Something's wrong with you. Get rid of that program. Get rid of that problem. Okay? Something's wrong. Huh? Get the kisses out. And find out whether something needs to be hurt, healed inside the heart real quick. Huh? You go to kiss and you get a shoulder. Something needs to be healed. Who's going to do that healing? Huh? You are, mister. You are. Huh? You don't just, oh, ah, just start fighting back because you got the cold shoulder. No, you're supposed to heal now. You've been anointed to bind up the broken in heart. It starts at home first. Are you listening to me? Oh, she just won't. No, you won't. It's your responsibility. You the ruler. You the priest. You the one who's been anointed by God to bring every good thing, to bring all the provisions of the grace of God and the goodness of God that makes everybody feel really, really good. 
really, really, really comfortable, really, really loved. Your wife doesn't feel loved, your children don't either. I don't care what they say. You listen to me. It's a spiritual climate. Your wife don't feel loved, listen, buddy, neither do your children. Get it right. Get, you know what you need to do? You need to hit, hit your knees real quickly. Huh? Because that's the way it's going to flow right down through the house. I'm going to say it again. Husbands, if your wife don't feel loved, neither do your children. No matter, they may not be able to articulate it. You may not be able to notice it, but it's a law. It's the way it flows. Huh? And so get that right. Mama may be loving them, but they don't feel the love. They don't feel the love. The love of dad is not what it's supposed to be, which then brings that, which brings that great confidence, which brings that, that great ability, that, uh, which brings that certainty, which brings that, huh, I mean, I don't believe that anybody can flow in the anointing without confidence in the love of God. You know why I can flow in the anointing? You know why it's so easy for me? Because I know how much he loves me. I know how devoted he is to me. I know how loyal he is to me. I don't need anybody to tell me how much God loves me. I know how much God loves me. I know and believe the love that God has for me. God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. Herein shall I have boldness. Amen. And even in the day of judgment, when it all comes in, I'm boldness. Why? Because I'm in a relationship with the loyalty of God's love for me. People, and I, you, your children need to have that. They don't need to be, have, a, have to spend half their life or the majority of their life getting over ill and mistreatment of dad in the home, dad towards mom, dad towards them, overbearingness, control, manipulation, harshness. All those things are opposed to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They're contrary to, to the fruits of the Spirit. Huh? Now, what's mom supposed to do? Start screaming, holler, Dad? No, you're supposed to get on your knees and pray. If he doesn't tell you right now, everybody needs to recognize that mom, the wife, is the daughter of the Lord. And father has a very tender and protective care for his daughters, no matter where you find father at. Are you listening to me? Unless some ruthless, demon-possessed person controlled by devils. Otherwise, a father is going to protect his daughter and take care of his daughter above everything else. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, it's a good... It's one of the first things that I really started, you know, waking up to early on in marriage. You know, as I'm crying out to the Lord, Lord, how do we raise children that are going to be godly, that are going to be filled with the Spirit, that are going to know how to interact with you and are going to know how to flow in the anointing. And the Lord put on my shoulders. Buddy, you better get it right. You better be tender to your wife. You, that, you, I'm going to hold you accountable for the, everything that you do to her or every way you treat her. She's your sister, she's your spouse, and she's my daughter. And you're not going to get away with nothing. And I said, Lord, I don't want to get away with anything. If I'm treating her wrong in any way, I want to know about it. Correct me. Because I understand that the, what, what I am ministering ultimately will go to my whole household. If I'm ministering control, the arm of flesh, trying to straighten it out myself, that's good. What's, my whole family is going to get. That's the spiritual climate. That's the spiritual influence. That's the spiritual effect. Huh? Are you listening? Do you understand? Because then well, that really goes on in way too many homes. And then those same men come sit in the church, try to say the minister is controlling. The minister is not controlling. You judge out of your own iniquity. You control it. Huh? The minister is just standing up doing what he's supposed to do. Demanding, as it were, commanding, rather, that you obey the Lord Jesus Christ. That you do the things that, that's right before the Lord. Huh? Well, that's okay because we know it's been prophesied for many years. If you're not making half the people mad in every service, you're not preaching the Word of God because the Word offends people. Word, word offends people. I praise God that's not the situation around here, I don't believe. I believe most people can love the Word of God. Hallelujah. Because the Word of God is, is sharp. It's powerful. It, it, does, it, is a, it reveals... A, the secrets of the heart, the thought and intent of the heart. And if the heart ain't right, you're going to get mad. You're going to get ugly. If the heart's right, you're going to be glad. You're going to be thankful. So, you know, your heart's always being revealed. And it's being revealed by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. So I, I'm just saying this. I just want to reinforce these things to you over and over again. God loves you so much. We love you so much. I mean, husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. As Christ loves the church, think about how much He loves us. I mean, the Lord's not shutting anybody out. 
He's continually calling us. Will he, uh, uh, will he demand it to be right? He will. He say, I'm going to give you space of time to repent and get it right. He's not going to go ahead and to say, oh, it's okay, be wrong. He's not going to do that. He's going to say, get it right, repent, or I'm going to come and I'm going to, I'm going to take the relationship away. Fellowship's going to go. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of here. That's what he said. He said it to Israel. He said it to the church. He even said, if you look warm, I'm not going to have fellowship with you. Huh? But the, so his love was poured out at Calvary's cross so we could be right and that he would have, and, and through, that, through that love, there's all the grace and all the mercy for, for, that we would need to learn how to be right, to walk with him. There, he's just so long-suffering. He's so patient. He's not going to stop. He's not going to give up. And that's the kind of love that he ministers to us in, and that's the kind of love we're supposed to minister to one another in. Command his house. I command my house. I command my house in love, though. I command my house first by getting on my knees and crying out to Father, saying, Lord, I want to do it right. I want to do it your way. Huh? I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bring his word as a letter that kills. I'm going to bring his word with the spirit that gives life. Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be empowering. I'm never, going to be, I'm never going to be overbearing. I'm never going to just find myself always correcting my children. I'm going to go back to children. I'm going to spend so much time with that. Correcting my children. And then when they've done so many good things, not praising them. You know, we, that's what people do all the time. They this like, you know, if, if something happens and they correct their child, maybe, you know, a hundred things take place in their life, right? And one time they do something wrong and you correct them. Ninety-nine times they do something right and you never say anything about it. That's wrong. And the Papa doesn't do that. He encourages us. Holy Ghost doesn't do that. He encourages us. He blesses us. He helps us to understand. Look, you're growing. You're maturing. This is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he blesses us with, with his hugs. Is there special hugs? And he, he blesses us with, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. Huh? <laughs> True. Somebody said, well, I didn't have a dad to do that, and I didn't know. You don't need a dad to teach you to do that. You got the Holy Ghost to teach you to do that. Quit finding an excuse. Just start following in God's footsteps. Just start bathing yourself. If you go to prayer meeting in the morning, you get so full of love. It'll flow out of you. You just want to hug everybody, and you'll start with your kids, and you'll start with your wife. You'll just be hugging and, and loving and kissing and, and you know. I mean, I, 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 I make it a point every day. Tell my wife, listen, baby, do you realize how grateful, how appreciative I am that you're in my life? I love you so much. I can't imagine you not being here. And you, do I have to do that? I feel it. I feel it. Because where did I get that? I got it from the same one who, huh, gave it to me. He fills me up with his love. And out of that love comes so much appreciation. Just I'm so thankful. It's amazing. Come on. My wife was doing something for me the other day. I said, baby, what do you think you are? You think you're my slave or something? She said, I, I just, I'd love to be. I said, no, you're not going to be that. Well, well, how, where does that come from? It comes from love. The Lord takes a talent based in the hand, washes her feet. It don't have to be. Huh? I'm not, I don't even want her to be. I want to, I, no, let me do it. Come on. No, I'm not let you do it. I'm going to do it. Peter, you can't wash my feet. Well, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have any part with me. You don't know this love. Huh? See, we get a wrong frame of mind, wrong reference point, and we try to make these things work in a human realm. Don't work in a human realm. It belongs to a heavenly realm. And the only way you and I get to participate with the heavenly realm is to get filled with heaven. Hallelujah. Ooh. And when we fill with heaven, guess what? Heaven flows out of us like rivers of living water. And everybody gets blessed by that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And this is an ongoing, continual thing. To, it's a, once again, it's back to the old commitment of not letting his word depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed. That's the covenant. When I recognize that's the covenant, when I recognize Isaiah 59 was a covenant, that this word should not depart out of my mouth, nor out of the mouth of my seed, and that I might be able to do these things that God has purposed. Man, I tell you, I, I said, okay, well, then I'm dedicated to that. Lord, let the, I, I want to get out of my, all of the things that I would be saying, all of uh, things speaking out of disappointment or speaking out of fear, or speaking out of stress. You know, I haven't been perfect in that realm, but I've been dedicated to being perfect, and that that's, makes the difference. 
and being dedicated to be perfect, being perfect, then when you do it wrong, it stands out really big. Huh? You're not dedicated to being perfect, you just kind of let it go. Wow, well, wow, well, she deserved it. She deserved nothing but kisses and hugs and, and blessings. And, ha, huh, come on, look at what Father blessed you with. I mean, he that finds a wife, finds good things, obtains favor from the Lord. But I'm talking about a wife. I'm not talking about a roommate. Are you with me? I'm talking about somebody in competition with you, huh? Come on now. Huh? Listen, in Jesus' name. So, of course, 1 Timothy, 3, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. See, I'm, I always run out of time before everything gets started. <laughs> Try and do this in an hour. It's just a feat. But nonetheless, nonetheless, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Who? Kind of, you see, I'll tell you, you, you can get drunk in the Holy Ghost just telling your wife how much you love her when it comes from heaven. Because anytime you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, no matter what subject it is, whew, it's beautiful. Praise God. It's a wonderful thing. And I pray that every one of you enjoy the goodness of God, the blessings of God that he has richly supplied to us. If we just cooperate. And when somebody says, I just need to learn how to receive. You just need to learn how to participate. You just need to learn how to cooperate. Just say what he's saying. Just thank him for what he's doing. Huh? Just do it as he does it. And you'll receive. Because it's in the participation of First 1 Timothy 3, 5 says, How can a man rule the house of God if he can't rule his own house. <laughs> now, I'll tell you right now, it don't matter how you dice it, it's rule. It's rule in the Greek language. It's rule in the Hebrew language. It means exactly the same in the English language as it does in the Greek language and the Hebrew language. Rule is rule is rule. To command, to say this is what we're going to do. To be the governor, to, be, to sit in a position. How many of you realize that one day, we are going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ over all the nations of the earth. And do you think that that's going to be an oppressive rule, an ugly rule, a bad rule, a rule that makes people feel miserable day in and day out? It's going to be a rule of righteousness. It's going to be his rule. Amen. In fact, right now, the word of God tells us that we rule in this life and we reign in this life. Right now, by Christ Jesus. If we just get over here in this realm of the anointing that he's supplied to us, and, when, and then we recognize in this wonderful divine relationship that Father's defined, we are heirs together of the grace of life. The man and the woman heirs together. Both are going to rule and reign with Jesus. Now get it right. So both persons, both parties have things to learn within the context of the relationship that is going to promote them into the blessings of God that are unlimited, untold, unimaginable. Nobody's going to obey God and not get blessed. While you're doing it, amen. Hallelujah. He hides you into his love. He hides you in his grace. I just found out, I'm just going to go ahead and announce this. I'm so excited about it. That one of the foremost leaders of the house church of China is actually going to come this time and actually preach. He came before and he sat in, 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 behind in, in the back because at the time security was such that he couldn't be seen. But now things are, have lightened up. And, oh, you know, he spent many years in prison, but he was hidden in the bosom of Jesus. He was hidden in the glory of God. It was all good. Well, I can't imagine prison in China being all good. Oh, it was all good. He was glorious. It was beautiful. He was wonderful. Come, I think he's going to be here on April 2nd, April 3rd. April 2nd. Coming right up. We're trying to get the building over here done. I'll probably hit on that now, too, because we want him. That and if you don't have any expertise, we're going to have to be scraping the floor here. You can scrape. I told Nathan, I said, you know, I'm not very skilled, but I can scrape the floor. Back to this. <laughs> that, but the other was important as well. Then 1 Timothy 3.14 says the same thing about a person who wants to be a deacon. You know what a deacon means? A servant. A servant. You know what a servant, another, another word for a servant? A minister. <laughs> you want to be a servant minister in the house of the Lord? Then you need to rule your own house. Your wife needs to be in subjection to you, huh? And you need to rule your children 
It needs to be seen. It needs to be observed by the household of faith unless you have a wrong example and a wrong model. You got somebody running around here and that, that wife's always aggravated. Always arguing. Forget about it. That's the wrong model. You, you can't. You, God loves you. God loves you, but you can't. You got to get the right things right home at home. And then you can't walk around all head, all down, say it's all my wife's fault. No, it's your fault because you aren't willing to fast and pray and touch heaven. Huh? Listen, a friend of mine told me one time, a preacher called me up one time, and he said, oh, man, things going bad at the house. My wife just being mean so defiant, she started smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I'm not getting here. And I said, I said, no, I said, so, do you want to hear the truth? Or do you want me to just comfort you? Huh? And so there's silence on the other side of the phone. And he said, okay, man, just go ahead. Because <laughs> he knew it's coming. <laughs> See, I've been like this a long time. This is about 25, 20, that's about 30 years ago. I've been like this a long time. He knew it was coming. He said, okay, just go ahead. He had to brace himself. For his, he had to fasten himself in his seatbelt, get all strapped in. He said, sounds to me like Jesus isn't in your house. That's all I said. Just said one time, sounds to me like Jesus isn't in your house. And he took that word and he ran with it and praised God, the revival that took place in his house within two years. Because he, he, he heard the word of the Lord. He, got, he hit his knees and said, you know what? Jesus isn't in my house. The man of God told me Jesus wasn't in my house. And, and I'm going to have Jesus in my house. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to have Jesus in my house. He went to fast and praying, crying out to God for the wisdom and the insight, for the anointing, for the love that it takes to have, you know, minister Christ Jesus, to minister the love of Christ Jesus. Huh? That's what, I, that's what Ephesians 5.25 means. Hallelujah. You can't do anything without Jesus. Men, women, you don't have to worry. If it's right, it, it's going, it, what, what God's plan for you is to have Jesus living in your house. Okay? And if you don't think you've got a full-fledged Jesus yet, you get to pray it too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You get to thanking God for all the things that he has done, all the good things. You throw your bad list away and start yourself a good list. And live by the good list instead of the bad list. A lot of people got a bad list. They got all the bad list. Black list, okay? And they live daily by the black list. Waiting for some proof that there's a change here. Nothing ever going to happen. It's your mindset. It's your behavior pattern. It's the way you think. It's the way you live. It's your demeanor. It's your spiritual state. It's what you're sowing into. And that's what you're going to reap. Get rid of that thing, man. Burn it. Stone it and burn it. Write yourself a good list. Start living by the good list from here on out. Sowing into the things that belong to the Spirit. Sowing into the life of God. Sowing into faith. Sowing into good report. Calling those things which are not as though they were, if that be the case. But it, it, because the Lord has said it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. This is what God said. We, this, we devoted. My husband's devoted this. I'm devoted. We're devoted to have it God's way. We're going to have it God's way because we're, we're going to take a hold of these things no matter what it costs us, no matter what it takes. We got to fast for 80 days, whatever. I mean, when you get serious with God, God's going to get serious with you. I'm telling you, people. Somebody said, well, when I fast, I can't pray. I'm going to tell you right now, that fasting has a huge impact because the Lord says, look at that. Oh, that. That's seriousness. I mean, it's one thing to show up for church every time. It's another thing to start fasting. Huh? They, it gets Papa's attention. It does. You start in Genesis, read all the way through, discover over and again. You'll get yourself a breakthrough. Come on, man. If you want it bad enough, you're going to work hard for it. You're with me. Yeah. You're going to sacrifice for it. You're, you're going your, to apply yourself. Everything is in you. You're going to apply yourself to get it when you want it bad enough. Well, I want the things that God has said bad enough. The things that he's declared, I believe them, and I want them bad enough. I mean, man, it, whatever we need to do here. And God's laid out what we need to do to have breakthroughs. Sometimes this kind of faith only comes by prayer and fasting. So we'll do it. And so we got to all rejoice. And now if, if you got rebellion going, I don't want no rulership over here. Well, you're not going to have any rulership then. 
You know, if you don't have faith that it's going to be God's rulership in your house and you're not hooking up in faith, what are you going to have? If two can't agree, how can they walk together? The greatest authority of faith is two people hooking up for the same cause that is described by the Word of God, not by an idea, concept, a philosophy, but by the Word of God. Father said, this is what I got for you. We're going to hook up in faith and have this. Father wants my husband to rule the house and that's what I want to. And so we're going to have that Holy Ghost rule that is only possible when Jesus lives here in us. Now, nobody's fighting, everybody's agreeing. Now all strife is gone. There, look, you got to watch out. I'm going to tell you right now, sedition is born in a home. Uh, sedition is the act of rejecting rulership. It is to reject rulership. It is to rebel against rulership. The sedition. Are you listening to me? On the highest order. We can't do that and have the blessing of God. Come on now. You're going to sacrifice something. Don't sacrifice the good things. Sacrifice the bad things. Sacrifice self-will. Sacrifice the fact that you don't understand really what's going on here. That if you'll participate with the plan of God, it's good. You're going to have a breakthrough. You're going to say, wow, I'm glad we did this. Okay. Amen. What time is it? How much time got left? Huh, we're doing good? Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How does the Lord rule? This is so important, men. God's not interested in just any kind of rule. If you hear rule, you better make sure you got the right concept, you got the right idea. Otherwise, you're going to participate with the wrong thing, maybe. You want to participate with the right kind of rule. And so I gave a list of scripture, just, just touched on a ver list of scripture because I had such a, forgive me, I had such a busy day. I just did this about 40, I just did about 45 minutes before we started the service. Just run through the list of trying things, things down. But they in my heart, you know, it's not like I didn't put my heart into it. I put my life into this. I, I put my life into this, okay? I believe this. This isn't some ideas I'm trying to communicate to you that I read out of a book. These are things that I believe. These things have become part of my very being, my makeup. It's the word that is engrafted. See, the word is engrafted in me. It's a part of my very soul. It's, it's like, it's a part of my very spirit, right? It's like taking and grafting in a, a branch into a tree. It becomes a part of that single organism. And that's what God wants in our life because then you don't have to, you know, spend so, spend so much time remembering. You'd rather just start doing. It's by nature now, amen, that we do those things that are contained in the law. And Father's given us all the capacity because he's given us a new heart and a new spirit and put a spirit in us. And furthermore, we've been born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God which lives and by forever. So we are offspring of the word, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that good? So, the Lord rules in justice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not oppression, justice. He's not going to come off constantly, with, you know, with, un, with, with a wrong, you know, balance and blame game. God don't do it. The Father isn't doing any blaming. Blaming has nothing to do with the rule. Helping. Huh? Supporting. Strengthening. Talking about the right way. Come on, get rid of that stuff. That belongs to oppression. And, uh, you know, really what would be good, what have been very good for me to do is to put, in the, to put in the opposites here that people could easily fall into within the behavioral patterns and with the interactions between husband and wife. What is the opposite of justice? What is the opposite of mercy? <laughs> Slamming the door and walking out, whatever. Screaming and hollering, going off into your room, sitting down, don't want to talk, all these other things. Not being willing to forgive. I still remember my blacklist. Whatever. You know, he, it's truth. He, he rules in truth. He reigns in truth. It's good to be under his reign. <laughs> it, 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 we're going to praise him that we, we cry out every day, Oh, Lord, take your power and come reign because we know how beautiful, how wonderful that that's going to be. It's going to take away the offenses. It's going to take away the sin. It's going to take away the hurt. It's going to take away the pain. It's going to take away the sorrow. It's going to take away the destruction. It's going to take away the covenant breaking. It's going to take away the heartache. <laughs> Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is that anointing that does in every way. Bind up the broken heart. Bring healing. Bring liberty. Bring freedom. Bring every good and perfect gift. This is what we want. That's the kind of rulership that we want. He's going to rule in covenant love. He's going to rule in loving kindness. He's going to rule in goodness. And the list goes on.
It's a happy place to be. It's fullness of joy. It's a blessing in every way. It's servitude and rulership through servitude. And of course, you know, one of the primary themes of the last uh, order in the house was leadership through servitude. It's rulership through servitude. It's governorship through servitude. That's the model of the Lord Jesus' leadership. That's the one we're following. We're here to imitate God. We're here to do it the way He does it, not the way that anyone else does it. Huh? Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And, and you know, it's very important that you understand, and, and, and I'm just, I keep jumping back to this in terms of the priestly role, because I'm not going to be able to talk much about the priestly role. We'll just have to talk about that next time. I'll do one more on this. But when you, when you understand how the, the Lord Jesus Christ ultimately brings us to the place that He has died, paid the price for us to come, to bring us into a place of maturity, into a place of an unlimited relationship. What is the act that He's doing? He's praying. He's interceding. He's down on His face praying for me. I mean, husbands, you got to get down on your face and pray for your wife. You need to be getting on your face and praying for your children. And just let it go. It's praying. It's crying out to God. It's touching heaven. It's not just, you know, it may start, look, I don't care how it starts off, just start. It may just start off trying to think of something to say. But if you were in the School of Spirit last week, I was pointing out the fact that the way the Lord models it is it starts with prayer in the Spirit and then goes prayer in the understanding also. Singing in the Spirit, then singing in the understanding also. And it's always got that transition. That's His way of doing it, as He described it in 1 Corinthians 14, 15. And I believe that. I believe with all my heart. I want to pray. I want to pray like the Holy Ghost is praying for me. You know what the Holy Ghost is doing in Romans, 6, Romans 8, 26? He knows about my weaknesses. Is He despised me because of my weaknesses? No. He's interceding according to the mind of God, the mind of Christ, the will of God for me. He's looking at my infirmities. He's looking at my weaknesses. And he, as he beat me up about it, taking me to task and telling me, I better get it right, or whatever, you know? No, he's praying for me. I mean, that is the model, people. If you want to see change, change comes by prayer. Prayer is a divine hookup with God so the Holy Spirit can get in and take care of us because nobody can change anybody except for God. No one, you can't change you. You can't change your spouse. Only God can change you. But let me tell you what you can do. You can greatly affect each other, huh? For good or for bad. Not pray in Jesus' name. The effect for now on will be good because you'll never change anybody, but you can affect them, huh? And then and the evil effect needs to go. Because you watch out, because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, somebody will rule in the house. Somebody will rule. And they will rule in righteousness or they will rule in, in wickedness. And if it's out of God's divine order, I'm going to guarantee you, if it's the woman, it ain't going to be ruling in righteousness, period. If by de facto the woman rules in the house, it will be a wicked rule. It can't be because it's out of divine order. Huh? The only possible way for a house to be ruled in righteousness is by the man ruling under the leadership and governorship and anointing and power of the Holy Ghost. But you and I, it should, it should be strange to us. We're supposed to live in the Spirit, Holy Ghost. We're supposed to walk in the Spirit. <laughs> we're, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to speak the things of the Spirit. We're supposed to, be, we're supposed to put on Christ Jesus. <laughs> Make no provision for the flesh, no matter how you define it, whether you define it as self-interest, human ability, or demonic realm. And boy, if God's people in the home would just begin to recognize the attributes of the demonic realm as one of the first keys to understanding how to function, flow in the Holy Ghost that I ministered in the School of the Spirit, which you can go back. It's episode one. You can go back and listen to it again. Okay? If people would just recognize how that they're yielding their members to unrighteousness, especially in the home through argument and strife and wrong thinking and wrong behavior and, and acting out of offense and acting out of hurt. And now all you're doing is ministering to one another and affecting one another in an evil way. 
You're not building each other up. Have Holy Ghost revival in your, church, in your house. Have the kind of church you want to live in in your house. Huh? Amen. Amen. Have the kind of pastor you want in your life by being that in your house. Come on now. Are you listening to me? Amen. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm constantly crying out to the Lord. Oh, Lord, make me a pastor. Oh, Lord, strengthen me to be able to minister your word and to minister the things of your spirit. On the, to where that it is no different than exactly how you would do it. I don't want to think that it's any of me. I know how loyal Father is. Father's so loyal to us. People don't know how loyal Papa is. He's so loyal. He's so faithful. He's so jealous. He's so protective over us. I hope you enter into that. I have. He's very loyal to me. He wants to be very loyal to you. He wants you to know it. You've got to know it to be able to benefit by it. You've got to be able to believe it and receive it. He'll stand with you. He'll uphold you. He'll be with you. He will not let you go. Nothing can separate you from him. He's jealous over you. He's jealous over you with a godly jealousy. I mean, one of his names is jealous. Huh? Because he's so loyal. So loyal. Not possessive. Loyal. Huh? So good. Come on. That's the rulership you want. Women. Huh? And I think every woman on the earth can say amen to that. Huh? And now they can go put their placards away and forget about dying 911 now. Huh? It's starting to sound better. But yet it still needs to, it's the weight of what we said in the first, really first four meetings of, of Order in the House has got to sink in because, and the reason I, I came at it so strong and is because first and foremost, the Lord told me to. And, and, and especially in light of all of the atmosphere supercharged with feminism, supercharged with rebellion, supercharged with competition, supercharged with all of these things that come right out of the mind of Satan to destroy the godly home so no godly seed can be raised up in any succeeding generation. When we commit ourselves to obeying God, we committed to seeing godly seed raised up. We're committed to seeing evangelists raised up. We're see, committed to seeing preachers and apostles and prophets and Holy Ghost-filled people raised up. What a ministry! People have gone, you know, uh, crossed land and sea to make one disciple and lost their, and their whole family went to hell because they didn't understand the value of the home, how that God started the home as the, as the context by which he would advance the kingdom of God and raise up those to follow him. I remember reading early on in life how that Mrs. Wesley Scolded, was, was rough with the kids, grouched at the kids one morning when she was getting them all squared away. And John Wesley recounts, no, it was Charles Wesley recounted, as she said, she came back into the room and she repented to her children and said, children, forgive me. Mama didn't stand in the glory this morning before she came out of her room. Come on now. Huh? Look at what was raised up out of that house. Hallelujah. Oh, and the strife wasn't raised up out of that house because whatever spiritual state, men, you allow yourself to be in, whatever spiritual state you will abide in your house, it will be reproduced to your children. It is a curse. It will not be broken, but by one means, repentance in the blood of Jesus Christ. There was no way for us to escape the sin of Adam or to escape the sin of our father or grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, all the way back. That, that thing passed upon each man. That curse, that wrongdoing, that injustice, that demonic stronghold, that, that place where Satan had gained right over somebody. The only way it could be broken was by this great grace that has been provided for us in Christ Jesus so that every man's life could be freed from the influence of every effect that could have ever been on their life all the way back to Adam. What great grace. Huh. And I'm telling you right now, it's, you talk about equal opportunity, it only, it only exists here. It only exists here at the cross of Jesus Christ, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now being willing, now being willing to be led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come under his governorship. Amen. So that you can rule in righteousness. So that you can live under the reign. Amen. Of righteousness. And so, um, 
just real quickly, how did the wicked rule? <laughs> Understand, God hates oppression, being controlling or overbearing. I didn't have an opportunity to go and write all the verses of Scripture, but you can go and take your any search engine from Strong's Exhaustive Concordance all the way to your computer program. Just look up the word oppressive and oppression. And you will see over and again how Father is against that person who oppresses his neighbor, who oppresses the people, who oppresses his family. God's against oppression. Make sure that what you're doing that you think is leadership is not oppression. Once again, I'll spend some more time with this. One more, at least one more time, just helping to flesh this out because I know that there are strongholds of culture and strongholds of wrong concepts where people really, they want to be doing the right thing, but they're doing it completely wrong. They got a wrong model. They got a wrong idea. It's cured by spending time in the Word and looking at Jesus and knowing who God is and seeing how His actions and behavior are and then imitate God. Amen. Dear children, be imitators of God. So, man is not right with God who deals treacherously with his wife. And of course, the Lord really even exemplifies this by putting it in the context of dealing with the wife of your youth, okay? Where you would just really love you when she was young and, you know, extra beautiful. Because my wife gets be more beautiful, and, and she's watching me right now. And, and I don't say that just because I know she's watching me right now. She gets more beautiful every day. Not every year. She's more beautiful. And she doesn't have to go in there and do all that stuff. Put all this. She's beautiful. But I'm, she's, so, she's such a blessing to me because she does. She goes in there and puts all that stuff on her face so that she won't have wrinkles and prays over her face. So, Lord, please, I want to be beautiful for my husband. My wife, why, why? That's amazing. You're beautiful just like you. you don't have to do any of that. Well, I just want to be more. See, that's just God. I want to be more. I want to give you more. I want to love you more. I want to serve you more. That's God. Huh? Not when are you going to do your turn? When's your turn? Huh? When are you going to balance this out? When's it going to quit being a one-way street? I'm never, I've been blessed. I've never heard any of that stuff. I've heard people tell me that they have to deal with that stuff. Huh? I was listening. I opened up the Bible the other day and was praying for some people. And right open the scripture said, Proverbs. There's a lot on this in the Proverbs. And you understand this is how God feels about it. God says, I'd rather crawl up in the corner on a rooftop than dwell in a house with a complaining woman. Come on, women. Listen to God. You want to please the Father? There's only one remedy to that. He says, a meek and a quiet spirit's a great price. I mean, think about it. From that culture, it was a flat roof. You expose the elements. Now, you're going to curl up in the corner of a flat rooftop rather than be down in the comfort of the warm house? Yeah, if I had to be with the complaining woman, always got an aggravation. It's a spirit. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it, it, women, it's, if you've got a complaining spirit and always your husband ain't meeting up, what's going to happen is soon, if, if he were to be able to fulfill all your list, as soon as that list is fulfilled, that's your 30,000 foot view. That's your 30,000 foot list. I'm going to talk to the camera because I know nobody's like that in here. 30,000 foot list. Because as soon as you got down to 10,000, that list would turn in to 100 times more. And then if he could do all of that, then you're going to get down to a 100 foot view of him. And that's going to turn into a list of a million times more things. And then if he could do all that, and now we got up close and personable, personable it's going to be a billion times more than that. Because it's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's an evil, stinking spirit. It belongs to a demonic realm. It is nonsense. It is not reality. It's relativism. It is a place of dreaming. That's why the Lord says, wake up out your sleep. It's a dream. Are you with me? Yeah. I had to get excited for a minute. Because <laughs> I had to preach. Huh? Because I'm passionate about it. God, the Holy Ghost is passionate about it. We got to watch out. There are evil spirits that are uniquely defined, uh, uh, designed to attack women. There are evil spirits uniquely designed to attack men. There's evil spirits uniquely um, set on, rather word than design, set on to attack the wife, set on to attack the husband. We're going to have to stop being ignorant. 
Okay, that's good. That's good. That's a good word. It's not a bad word. Do not be ignorant to the devil's devices. Right? And I quit being ignorant to the devil's devices. We're going to have to wake up and recognize, wait a minute, I need to be praying for my wife. Hello. I need to be upholding her. And, 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 and different women have different sets of things that they're having to go through, especially women who are having to go to work and they, and they labor all day in work. Huh? And then they come home and they try to labor at the house. Men have to have special care and concern for their husbands serving, ministering to their, hus to, their, to their wives in that state. And then look, it's another situation altogether when the wife isn't working and the husband comes home and does anything. I, you, come on, he's gone, he's worked all day, he's been at home all day. I mean, come on. And, and, and what? You didn't get around to cooking anything? You're going to tell me that's ministering love and help? Give me a break. That's just wrong. It's just wrong. No matter how you spell it, it's wrong. <laughs> and, and I would go ahead and put that in caps. Uh, that ain't, that's, not, that's not ministering love. Come on now. So I, 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 could, I could bust out a few more examples, but I'm going to leave it there. I don't want anybody to get too sad on me here at the last. <laughs> too overwhelmed. Just, just need to grow up in the love of God and the ministry of the Spirit. And I don't want to go back to preaching the first four, ep first four meetings, you know, on order in the house about how a woman's supposed to care for the house, tend to the needs of the home. I believe that with all my heart. She's supposed to be a keeper at home. Somebody said, well, that's just cultural. Well, that's just Bible. You say it's just cultural. Well, I find that culture of the kingdom. Now, does that last forever or not? Or did that pass away? Why? Because mama has the ability to nurture and mentor the children that dad does not have. God designed it that way. He designed it that way. Dad has given in a place of authority that mama doesn't have. Therefore, he can be the disciplinarian. He can be the one who gives greater guidance with respect to where the children are going to go. That's why it's a greater offense for mom to disrespect dad than for dad to disrespect mom. Both are bad. But when mom disrespects dad, she despises and disrespects the authority. The children are going to model mom first. First, she's the mentor or the nurturer. Huh? And they're going to just be learning how to disrespect God and defy God. Huh? Okay. I don't go back into that. That was last week. So, trying to wrap this up. <clears throat> I just, this is kind of repetitious, but I just want to read it. God has made the man responsible for the entire household. Men, what door you open up, that's what's coming in. What the wife does, she's not going to be... Bottom line of it, is she's, what she does is gonna, not going to have any real effect on the home from the perspective of just in general wrongdoing. Because you, man, you're the responsible one. You're the one who God's going to hold responsible. You're the one who's going to either open the door for Satan to come in and destroy things, or you're the one who's going to keep that door shut so Satan can't come in and ruin your house. And I, that's why I believe that if a man walks right with God, his wife's going to be right with God. And if a man is the priest of the home and the ruler of the home doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord, and I'm just talking about his relationship with the Lord, then the relationship with the wife and the man is going to be perfect. The woman is going to, she's, going, she's just going to come under that anointing. I believe it with all of my heart. And then I'll show you a couple of examples here. Joshua was able to speak for himself in the, on behalf of his entire family. And when he said, as for me and my house, we, are, we will serve the Lord. Achan was also able to speak on behalf of his whole, his, his self and his whole family. Joshua 7, 24. And we know what happened there. Achan decided he was going to go do it his own way. He wasn't going to listen to the command of God. After all, just all of it. 
He didn't hear God say it. He didn't read it in the Bible. That just preacher said it. That preacher said it. How do we know he knows what he's talking about anyways? Huh? I think he just wants everything for himself. Who knows what all he was thinking? Man hasn't changed in his opinion and the way he processes thoughts. So he said, I'm going to go ahead and get myself that wedge of silver. Huh? And that change of raiment. And uh, Father was very angry against Israel and his wrath and his anger and his indignation burned against it because he's not going to have that mess in his household. He's not going to have that mess in his household. Huh? He's going to crush it out. He's going to deal with it. He is. And the lot fell upon Achan. You know the story. And they brought out his wife, his children, everything that he possessed, his animals, and all of Israel stoned them and burned them. Pretty radical, ain't it? Men, then we can ultimately, we can then final, finalize with the biggest event of all, of course, Adam. It wasn't Eve's transgression that resulted in sin taking over and sweeping man. It was Adam's transgression. Huh? We didn't need Mary to come and redeem man. We needed Jesus to come and redeem man. Because the man is responsible. Man, I'm telling you, it's on your shoulders. Don't you put it on your wife's shoulders. It's on your shoulders. Don't you put it on your wife's shoulders. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. You pray it through. God will answer you. He will fix it. The more you try to fix it, the more you wrestle with it, the more you try to debate it, the more you try to argue about it, the worse it's going to get. You're shutting God out. Huh? You step back, you put your trust in the Father, and you come, and He'll work. Amen. Hallelujah. Just by, you know, just by way of introduction for the next uh, order in the house, I just want to say that the Lord has called us to be priest over our home, even as Christ Jesus is priest over His house. And when we think about a priest, a priest is the one who brings the need of the people to God. And by bringing the need of the people to God, finds the means for that need to be met, that sin to be erased, that sickness or disease to be healed and cured. Then he comes back out of the presence of the Lord, having received this divine power and a grace. And he enters in front of the people and he blesses the people with the blessing of the Lord so that their sickness and their disease is healed, so that their sin is removed with that divine anointing that he received there in that prayer meeting as he came to the throne of grace. Jesus ever living to make intercession for us. We have such a high priest that has passed in the heavens for us who forever lives to make intercession for us. So he's there to secure us, to make sure that we make it to make sure that the things that we need are supplied to us, that the offenses and that the hurts and that the transgressions that have overwhelmed us are broken off of us. When you understand spiritual battles, you will recognize that the greatest enemy is the spirit of offense. It works more effective against people, not only in your home, but among your extended family. Friends, that's why so many broken relationships, that's why there's not a lot of people who have long-standing friendships in the church. The spirit of offense is your major number one enemy. You're going to have to stand in the presence of the Lord, receive a divine anointing, divine grace and insight to be able to effectively deal with it so it cannot take a hold of your own life, your own thinking, your own thoughts, your own attitudes, nor those that God has held you responsible for. And Father's held you. Right now, you've got one person you're responsible for, huh? Beside yourself. And actually, you put her before yourself. You make her more your responsibility than yourself. But you're going to have to be right. You can't give anything until you first receive it. You can't give anything until you first receive it. No man has anything lest he's received it from heaven. Amen. So I command a blessing on every one of you in the name of Jesus. Whatever problem has been in your household, I break the power of every unholy thing in Jesus' name. 
I apply the blood of Jesus Christ to you, to your family. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you back off, you lying into hell, you obey. Obey me. You lead the property of God alone. And Father, we thank you for the insight and the wisdom and the strength that you give to your people to be able to see and understand things as they really are as the Holy Spirit ministers to them and strengthens them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I feel like laying hands on everybody now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love all of you. Sorry, I went over time.